Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the brand new tier 8 pan-European destroyer, the Kitsonis. Kitsonis? I'll let you guys figure that one out. That's on you. Uh, but we're going to get right into our commander. We're obviously running Jersey Swirsky for a couple of reasons, but mainly uh, I love concealment. You guys know this and having a radar gunboat able to like conceal itself with some of the sneakiest ships in the game is pretty absurd. Uh, but with all of that being said, Jersey Swirsky's base trait gives us better sea detectability range. And of course we have him maxed out. Um, and then of course we have Eric Bay who also gives destroyer detectability and we have them maxed out. Uh, and then just for good fun, we have er er William Sims on here for a little bit of hitch point. Hitch points, guys. Hitch points, not H points, not not hit points. It, it's not HP. It's hitch points. I, I don't know where I went with that, but uh, apparently we're getting married. If you don't understand that reference, y'all don't know Southern or Appalachian. <laughs> getting hitched, right? You ever heard that that phrase? You ever you ever heard of getting hitched before? Anyway, uh, observant rage is obvious we are running look at me now instead of mortar i feel like mortar is kind of a double-edged sword uh and not a good way like it's against you. you you do get a little bit more damage yes uh but remember we only have he um on this ship and so 13 percent more he shell damage seems good but you give up four percent detectability but it's worse than that not only do you lose 4% detectability, you would have had a minus 6%. So in essence, you're actually giving up 10% of your detectability by choosing mortar. Uh, that is unacceptable, in my opinion. The trade-off just isn't worth it. However, in the third slot, we obviously have perceptive. Uh, this gives us, uh, they also have twist and track here, which is stupid to me. Like, I don't understand why I have perceptive and twist and track. Like that, I don't, I don't get it. Yes, yeah, some some ships benefit from uh, traverse speed, but honestly, who's going to choose a little bit of extra traverse speed on a destroyer over reducing the incoming damage and having, um, you know, the same perk of being able to see the enemy ship for, like, or show the direction of the enemy ship? Sorry. Uh, and then in the last slot, we have Jersey Swirsky's Fox Flare skill, which allows us to have a faster main battery reload while the radar is active by 10%. And also, radar duration matches the smoke generation action time if the ladder is longer. So what you do is you proc your radar, and then right before it runs out, you guys smack the smoke button, and you will reset to a 20-second radar. Meaning, you get essentially a 30-second radar out of this if you use it properly. In theory. In practice, it's hard to remember all that in the middle of getting into a fight, right? Like, you're you're in a knife fight, there's a lot going on, you're usually being shot at, not by just the destroyer, but also other people in the area. So it can be difficult to proc the radar and then try to hit the smoke in the right timing to get the most out of it. But it's still, if you can pull it off, is a cheesy way to get essentially a 30 second radar on a destroyer. But, uh... Yeah, and then of course in the bottom slot we do have the um, unstoppable perk, uh, which gives us you know the ability to keep moving even if our engine gets knocked out. All right, sorry about that. Had to yawn. I don't know what it is about recording, but as soon as I start, I have to yawn. Uh, we have aiming systems mod one here in the first slot. You could swap this for uh, main battery mod two to get a little bit better traverse speed without any negatives whatsoever. Uh, if you wanted to, because most of the time, the, the ranges you're going to be fighting, the the extra 7% main battery dispersion isn't really that big a deal on a destroyer. So you could absolutely swap for the main battery uh, mod 2 here. Um, of course, we have steering gears on because we cannot run propulsion mod because this is essentially, I believe, a British hull, right? Somebody can correct me on this, but yeah, that's why you don't have... Uh, you don't have the propulsion mod here because British ships have it built in. Okay. Uh, but yeah, steering gears. Uh, you could go damage control there, but really isn't necessary. And then, of course, we are definitely going to be running concealment. 
and then in the final slot we have the main battery mod 3 epic mod so every 30,000 damage we do we get a little bit of boost to our main battery reload time unfortunately this knocks out our traverse even worse uh, you will see that this thing doesn't have the best traverse despite having single gun turrets but I'll show you in the game that it doesn't really matter all that much um, in the grand scheme of things but keep in mind if you do run this then uh, you might want to opt for the um, turret traverse module in the first slot because that essentially gets rid of this entire negative and adds an extra 5% faster turret traverse which is negligible at best. All right, so we are running the uh, engine boost consumable. You could go uh, AA there, but personally, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, but you have your smoke, like I said, 20 second uh, duration. So if you take and use this with that perk uh, Fox Flare, you can set this from a 10 second duration. You proc it initially, use your, and by proc, I mean hit, hit the button. Use the button for the radar, let it get down to uh, the last couple of seconds and then smack your smoke button and it resets to 20 seconds, essentially giving you about a 30 second radar. It's close, but again, it's, it's tricky in the moment because you tend to get like locked in and you forget. But if you can get it down pat, you can absolutely cheese the radar. Uh, with this build, we do have 23,500 hit points. So pretty solid, but not amazing for a tier eight gunboat. Uh, but it's pretty solid you're competitive in the hit point area um some people are probably going to argue and be like short what do you mean it's not amazing it's it, it's good don't get me wrong but i'm pretty confident there are other destroyers that can have a much higher hit point rate but out of those destroyers that have the higher hit points how many of them are going to be detectable at 5.2 kilometers that's that's the kicker and have a radar and smoke 140 millimeter 50 caliber blp ones or pis i'm not sure which one or pls i don't know what that is it could be uh one or the other i don't know uh but you have six of them in an interesting configuration but uh single barrel guns but you have six guns which is pretty good you get 11 kilometers of firing range with this build a 3.2 second base firing uh or reload time uh that's pretty pretty nasty all right, and considering that you will get that better with the different perks that we have and, and whatnot, like that, that's going to be huge. But 180 degree turn time, not the best. But again, it's a destroyer. 15.1 seconds is hardly horrendous. If you're used to battleships with 30 second concealed or 30 second traverse times and stuff, like this isn't that big a deal. Where it can be a little bit tricky is when you're in a knife fight and you're trying to dodge and get away, trying to mit mitigate the incoming damage against you. Uh, keeping those guns on target may not always be an option. But your gun firing angles in this thing are actually kind of silly. Uh, we'll go over that in a minute. HE shell maximum damage, 2,000, so not particularly high. But again, 140 millimeter guns. Uh, these are sneaky guns. Uh, they're not the biggest guns in the world, but they do pack a punch. And they pin a lot more than you'd expect. I don't know why, but they, they just do. But fire chance is 10%, which is pretty good for a destroyer. Torpedoes, you get 533 millimeter QR Mark IV torpedoes in a 2x4 configuration. This is not what it seems, and we'll go over that in a minute. But uh, yeah, keep that in mind. These torpedoes are annoying, to say the, the least. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll go over that in a minute. I, I won't forget, but we, we will wait till we look at the ship to show that off. But maximum damage... 10,700 with a, 70, a 75 second reload time, which is not good torpedoes. I think we can all agree. Those are very meh torpedoes. Most of the stuff you're going to be hitting with torps is going to have a pretty solid torp reduction at tier 8 and legendary tier and tier 7. So most of the time, these torps are going to do very minimal damage. So what you want to do is try to set fires, get them to damage con, and then hit them with torpedoes. Get those perma floods if you can. But again, Sometimes you just gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? Just throw the torps out there. They got nine kilometers of range, so not terrible, not great. Uh, pretty mid-range torps. 80 knot speed though. That's where the fun comes in. These torps get there in a hurry. Not the fastest torps in the world, but they they will get there. Okay, they will get they will get there. Uh, they will sneak up on people. Uh, the detectability I forgot to, is 1.6 kilometers, so a little bit on the bad side when it comes to torpedo detectability, but not terrible. Pretty, it's kind of like the high side of mediocre when it comes to detectability. So, it's a little bit worse than average. 
Let's just throw it at that. Instead of 1.3 or 1.4, you get 1.6. Is that a big difference? Not really, especially when they're doing 80 knots. <laughs> okay? It kind of cheeses the, uh, the reaction time out of it, right? Again, like I've always said for you battleship commanders out there that struggle so much with torpedoes, all I can say is if you're waiting to see the torpedoes, it's too late. You got to anticipate torpedoes, the direction they're coming from, and, and be able to dodge that way. If you wait till you see them, you're going to be taking torps. All right, AA defense. This is why I say running the uh, the defensive AA uh, consumable, not the greatest. 20 millimeter Orlick and Mark 24s. You get 12 of those doing 37 damage per second, reaching out to just two kilometers. So basically, somebody throwing rocks from the deck. It's fine. 76.2 millimeter 50 caliber Mark 34s. You get two of those doing 29 damage per second, reaching out to only four kilometers. And then 76.2 millimeter 50 caliber Mark 22s. You get four of those doing 42 damage per second, reaching out to four kilometers. So in total, in total, you have a whopping 12, 14, and uh, 18, 18 guns of AA firing at, at planes. Uh, and that's assuming that you could use all of it at the at one time and not just like part of the AA off of one side of the ship. So yeah, AA not great. <laughs> Maneuverability: 42 knots of maximum speed without the engine boost. So very nice and quick. That is that is one of the good things about these ships. They are nasty when it comes to getting it. Now the turning circle is leaving a little bit to be desired. Rudder shift fantastic with this build. Four seconds. Anything less than that, I mean, you're you're trimming hairs here, right? Like, is there really a reason to have faster than four seconds rudder shift? I know some people out there would claim that there is, and others would be like, eh. There's better places to allocate that you would get a little bit more return on investment when it comes to, you know, perks or whatnot. But I digress. It all comes down to play style. I don't hate on other play styles as long as it's working, right? 720 meter turning circle for a uh, destroyer. Pretty awful. Um, I say that we're at tier 8. These ships are not exactly tiny, right? Like, just because it's a destroyer, we think of, like, destroyers versus battleships. They're tiny ships. But they're not tiny, right? So, still... It's admirable, but it suffers from the same issue that a lot of the high tier destroyers do, and that is the full turn. The full turn just does not work with a lot of high tier destroyers. Shimikaze, Kaba, uh, the list goes on and on. There's, there's a ton of high tier destroyers that struggle with the same thing. Um, and that's because they're so long, right? The longer a ship is, the harder it is to turn in the water. We talked about this with the Shard Horse 43 the other day where I said, oh, the Shard Horse has a terrible turning circle for its, for its size. And everybody's like, yeah, but Spartan, the Sodaks weren't as long as the, the Shard Horse. And I'm like, yeah, technically the Shard Horse was longer than the Sodak, which contributes to its inability to turn. But so the Sodaks were also 10,000 tons heavier than, than the, uh, the Shard Horse. But I digress. Uh, anyway, so a longer ship, doesn't turn as well in the water, but do not get it twisted. This ship is agile when it comes to dodging shells. So you can kind of kite away from folks if you have to and get jiggy with it. And they will struggle to hit you, uh, kind of. But just, just as a, a thought, you may not always want to commit to a full turn, but we'll show why that turning circle is especially bad in a moment. Uh, detectability by sea is 5.2 kilometers, and that's what we talked about earlier. The 5.2 kilometer detectability on a radar gunboat is stupid. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. It's stupid. There's no reason a radar gunboat should be able to get within 5.2 kilometers of anything without being spotted. That is absurd. That is almost shimikaze levels of sneakiness on a radar gunboat with smoke. Just a thought. Maybe I'm crazy. Detectability range by air is three kilometers, guaranteed is always two, and the t detectability while firing in smoke is 2.9. So a little bit worse than most destroyers, I feel there, but uh, not terrible. Uh, 2.9 kilometers is is silly anyway. All right, now the uh, stats is probably not going to be the greatest for this ship. Yeah, 25% win rate. I play the the ship to win. All right, when I play a destroyer, I play to win. I have a 25% win rate. So most people would look at this and be like, oh, it's a terrible destroyer. Why would anybody want to play it? Y'all don't know what I went through the night that I was trying to record a video on this. Yeah, it's a small sample size, but I promise the more I play this ship, that win rate's going to start to skyrocket. 
All right, we just had a bad run of, of bad teams. Like, this ship was handling business, all right? So uh, I'm going to show you guys a video from that night, but just, just don't look at the win rate on this ship right now and go, oh, this is a terrible ship. Trust me, it is not a terrible ship, <laughs> okay? I just had really bad teams that night. So with that being said, 50, well, 49% gun accuracy. So not the most accurate guns in the world, considering the engagement ranges that I tend to get into with this thing. And that is something that I think a lot of people are going to run into. And that is why I run the extra 7%, uh, um, oh, what do you call it? Main, main battery mod one or whatever to, to get the extra 7% of accuracy dispersion. Uh, because of that. But you also notice that 23% torp accuracy, while that sounds terrible, considering I have normally a 7% torp accuracy uh, or somewhere in that neighborhood, that is fantastic. <laughs> All right. So that just shows that when, when I use these torps, they tend to be pretty effective. Uh, or at least they hit the target anyway. Uh, warships destroyed on average 0 0.8. Again, stats on this ship going to look terrible, right? We, we've lost more than we've won, so the XP looks terrible. But uh, you can see that our potential damage against us is 450,000 uh, also. So we were getting shot at quite a bit for a destroyer. But just as thoughts. Anyway, let's move on. Armor, you don't have any. You're a destroyer, so get over it. Um, but to be more specific, you have like 19 mils of everything everywhere. Um, so there are some, some things that are going to struggle against you, but anything that shoots HE is going to pin you. Uh, and this thing has so much free board. And that is the one downside that I think is the biggest issue for these particular ships. They sit so high out of the water. That's what I refer to as the free board, by the way, so much out of the water, uh, that they, they just take shells from everything. So you got to be careful. Uh, you got to really pick your spots when you're trying to engage. Uh, but look at the interesting gun layout on this ship. Can we just look at it? So we got three guns up front that look very much like a uh, Omaha, right? So this is like a mini Omaha, essentially. But three guns up front. Then we have our three guns at the back. So you have six guns total. Now, these are not super firing turrets at the back. You, you do have two super, super firing turrets, but one of them is not. So that means it cannot look over the back of the ship. However, any angle whatsoever, you can get at minimum five guns on target. And then there is an angle which you can get that sixth gun on target. So at, at one point, there is a possibility to be firing six guns downrange at your enemy every three seconds or less, depending on how much damage you've already dealt. So keep that in mind. Now, the other thing I want to bring up before we, before we end and go to the, uh, the like, description is the reason I say these torpedoes are awful. Uh, and that is, they are wing turret torpedo launchers. Uh, generally speaking, when you have a wing turreted torpedo launcher, you have one wing turret on one side, one wing turret on the other side, and then usually one in the middle. So you have essentially three torp tubes, or three sets of torp tubes, and so you can get two torp tubes off of either side of the ship. That is not the case here. You have a single quad launcher on either side of the ship. You cannot fire these off of the other side of the ship, no matter how hard you try. They are only going to be four torps off of either side. When you couple that with the fact that they are very low damage, uh, you are not going to want to be selling out to use the torpedoes. Use them as area denial or in a guarantee ambush sort of scenario. But uh, just keep that, keep that in mind. You will have to do a full 180 degree turn in order to get the other four torpedoes away. And as we discussed, not the, not the best at making full turns. Agile when it comes to dodging, not so much when it comes to full turns. Um, so keep that in mind. That is the one caveat to these ships that I have to I have to bring up. And that is why I say this ship quite not quite up to my standards as the split was. Split's fantastic. I love the split. Split is incredibly busted for its tier, I think. A little bit too strong. She's so much fun to play. And this thing is strong, is, is a lot of fun to play, but because of those torp launchers being the way that they are, not my favorite ship to play. And of course, at the tier, you've got a lot more stuff that's going to be countering you. You got the legendary tier uh, cruisers and destroyers, and you got all kinds of stuff that you're going to be going up against now. And this thing just kind of kind of fits in there. So while the tier seven may be the strongest tier for tier of the line, 
this is by far from a bad ship. This is a pretty solid ship. I just have to throw those those few negatives out there for those of you who are interested in picking this up. All right, so she's fast. We already talked about that above maximum movement or above average maximum movement speed. Flare for fire. This is what we talked about. It only has HE shells. All right, and that does hurt it in some situations. Uh, this thing, if this thing had AP, this thing could be nasty. But yeah, it only has HE, but the HE is very good. All right, so don't get it twisted. Just because it only has HE doesn't mean it, it isn't good HE. Uh, short range, low torpedo range. Yeah, I mean, nine kilometers, I wouldn't call that low, but it's definitely, considering you're at tier eight and you know most of the ships are having 12 to 15 or 18 kilometers or whatever they are, uh, torp range, I guess it would be considered low. But this is a medium range torp boat. But again, it's not the torpedoes that you're looking for in this ship, it's the guns. So the Katsanis or the Katsonis, I'm not sure which way it's pronounced. In the late 1920s, the Greek Navy leaders debated building more conventional ships versus fewer but stronger ones. In 1929, Greece chose the first approach, ordering four simplified destroyers from Italy. An alternative could have been ordering a pair of large ships with 5.5-inch guns, like the British E-Class cruisers. Lambros Katsonis was named after a Greek uh, liberation leader so the year of 1929 but doesn't look like they were ever built but yeah I think that this is all right somebody's gonna have to like talk and the fact that this is built like on the platform of a uh, British cruiser kind of tells you everything you need to know about why there's so much freeboard and the fact that you can't use propulsion mod but other than that I like the ship we just got to get a better run of, of good luck out of this ship uh, and hopefully during a live stream or something, we'll be able to show this thing in its full glory because it can be a lot of fun to use this ship. You can harass the ever living out of everybody. Not only do you directly counter most destroyers that you come up against, but this thing is an absolute nuisance at fighting just about everything because that HE pens pretty much everything and uh, has a pretty good fire chance too. So with all of that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on Land of Fire. I know, it's crazy. It's like it's meant to be. We only have HE, can only set fires, so why not be on Land of Fire? Now, I will be 100% with you guys, right off the bat. This is my very first game in this ship. And as you saw, we've only played four games in this ship, and they all happened basically the same night and uh it was it was a rough night as you guys know uh sometimes sometimes you get good teams and sometimes you don't and when you don't man things just do not end well uh and despite this being a pretty fun destroyer to play i just kept getting in just the worst possible situations like uh there was one game in particular if i remember correctly where i spawned in i'm thinking okay we'll go in here we'll get rid of the destroyer like i normally do and then Everything that could counter me in the lobby did. <laughs> like, legitimately, we had, we had, uh, one match in particular, we had three different radars within radar range of me, so I was, I was radared until I died. Uh, which, surprisingly, lasted longer than I expected, but good God, man. You can only dodge for so long. Eventually, the dum-dums are gonna hit you. <laughs> if you're lit up long enough, you can only dodge for so long, right? But uh, we're going to try to get in here on Land of Fire, go into Charlie. Uh, it is domination, so first things first, we want to go forward, try to find the enemy destroyers, and also try to get some sort of map control. Uh, getting these cap control early. I don't always recommend trying to go straight into the cap and try to do that, but uh, you will notice that right off the bat, I don't, I don't, when I go into a first game, like, I usually don't try to, like, look at everything right out the gate. So, like, I didn't realize that we only had one launcher off of either side of the ship until it was uh, about the time that I tried to use them. So, this is, again, something, but you notice that we are contested. There's a destroyer here. But, because we have such good speed, such good uh, concealment, we're going to go ahead and use the radar. But watch me as I try to use the radar. That 10 seconds goes really fast, all right? It goes really fast. And I missed the proc of the smoke by just long enough for him to disappear before I hit it. So we, we were about three seconds late on hitting the smoke there. But I did 3,300 damage to a Shimakaze. Shimakaze generally has about 16,000 health. So we took a good chunk off of him, right? Now, uh, we do have a smoke screen, but unfortunately we don't have any teammates that are able to spot anything that's in firing range. So 
rather than sit here, we do have an island between me and the Shima, so we're not likely to be uh, torpedoed by the Shima. But I don't want to leave the Shima alone. But notice there's a Montpellier coming over as well uh, as the enemy. Um, oh, what was it over there? I think it was the the new the new cruiser, SAP cruiser. God, what what was that thing? The Michelangelo that was on the left, right? But uh, you can see, as I push in, I want to get into a fight with this Kagero. I'm waiting for the guns. Uh, Kagero gets spotted. Kagero disappears. Kagero drops smoke. I don't have radar. Uh, but this would have been the ideal Critical scenario to radar. Damage. I maybe jumped the gun a little early. But you can see that we also have Montpellier keeping me spotted. He comes around the corner just in time to see me fire my guns and uh, get me spotted, and the, the Shima actually got a shot off at me. Now, obviously, now we've got to worry about potential torpedoes. So we want to keep using the island as a torpedo shield, right? He can't torp through them, so we're going to torp the edge of the smoke screen. And this is where I recognize that I have one torp tube on either side of the ship. I tried to use both sets, and I'm like, wait, that ain't working. What? But look at the fact that we already have our, our, uh, our radar back. This is where things get potentially spicy right as i get him radared we go into the smoke he comes out and now he's in the scenario where i was he panics because of his radar and unfortunately i don't have any teammates shooting at the guy but i also don't have anybody in position to keep him spotted so once again we have a situation where the the kagero gets away for the moment but the iowa is starting to push in he is committed to pushing we have the uh, enemy Mike michelangelo on the far left we have the montpellier that i am desperately trying to stay away from by using the island in front of me and we are trying to just force the enemy shima away if we can keep him off balance he can't really set up good torp strikes on my battleships right this is called torpedo screening right this is where you're screening for your battleships and as we get into a fight once again with this kagero uh, I just want him gone. I, I said Shima Kazi at some point, but it's a Kagura. It's, it's Japanese destroyer. Doesn't really matter. But uh, we're able to get rid of him here. Uh, but I say we're able to get rid of him. Of course, we end up hitting just enough shells to leave him with just enough for it to be a problem. But uh, we took a little bit of damage there, but we are going to be able to dump some torps and get away. Uh, we get behind the island so that the Iowa is no longer spotting us, and we're going to try to get turned around. And this is where you can see the, the Kagura's torpedoes. We're actually going to reverse towards the Iowa, get turned around, and then come out the other side to dump our torpedoes. Now, as far as this Iowa is concerned, I just ran away, right? I'm no longer in a cap. I just got out of there. So he's perfectly fine to, to push up. We didn't hit any of our torpedoes, unfortunately, but we do have the set on the other side. And we've had just enough time to get everything turned around in order to be able to use these. And we are going to, as he speeds up, you want to notice that he's speeding up. We want to make sure that we put these torps out ahead of time uh, uh, because he's going to speed up into them, right? We don't want to lag the torps behind, assuming he's slowing down because he's speeding up. So these torps being as fast as they are, even though he recognizes that he's probably getting torped right now, it's too late. They're, too, they're already on him and they do do some damage. They might not do a lot of damage. I mean, it's only 7,450 a uh, pop, but we've got the perma fires, we've got the perma floods, and we've managed to uh, put a significant chunk of damage on this Iowa who was being a little bit too brazen for his own good. Now, we're, we're dodging torpedoes right now that I didn't know was coming, but I just figure if I turn and run, we'll be fine, right? Just outrun the torpedoes at this point. Um, they weren't meant for me, most likely, so just getting away from it is probably our best bet. But as we turn back in, we don't want to leave our battleships, right? One of them has died, the other one is still alive. If we can keep these guys alive, we have a Montpellier and a Michelangelo over here. Montpellier ends up, up going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Sharn Horse, which is best case scenario for me. And now I've got to come around the corner and deal with the Michelangelo. And as the Sharn Horse player has done a very good job of actually maintaining some hit points, staying behind the islands relatively well, but still maintaining shots on targets, we got rid of the biggest threat to him in the uh, Iowa. So now it's just Sharn Horse versus a couple of cruisers, and that is where Sharn Horse is, is actually pretty solid. But uh, Montpellier goes down. We've done 70,000 damage. I've got to try to predict what the Michelangelo is going to do here. I assume that he's going to try to bow tank the enemy Sharn Horse or my friendly Sharn Horse, but he ends up, smoke like, generated. not doing that at all. So we just go ahead, drop our smoke, and we are going to go ahead and use our radar. There's no reason for us not to have our radar here. So we're going to use our radar for uh, this once again. We only get 10 seconds, but that's plenty of time to make this man's life miserable. 
as he then contemplates life choices and uh, looks forward to going to the next match. You can see Shardworth just flat out whiffing on the shot of a broadside Michelangelo in true German battleship fashion. But he lands the shot that he needs to to get the kill, uh, and we just simply move into the cap at this point. Um, now, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot left for you guys to... to like see in this match other than we're going to capture the base and then we're going to head across the map and try to help with uh, the the battleship and the destroyer but the destroyer kills the michelangelo and uh, the battleship is going to end up getting torped and then the destroyer is simply going to run to the back corner of the map and we're not going to be able to get to him in time so rather than make you guys sit here and watch all this i'm just going to speed speed up the game until the end and uh, we can talk about the ending but yeah so overall i i don't like the torp launchers the way they are uh but other than that it's i think it's a fun boat to play and i look forward to playing it more in the future as uh we try to get that win rate back and get a little bit of uh you know respect on this ship but uh, let me know what you guys think i'm very interested to see what you guys think about this thing have, have any of you guys actually gotten your hands on it yet uh it is in the tech tree for those of you wondering uh but personally i think it's a fun boat it's just you gotta be a little bit more uh Oh, selective about your battles. You don't want to be fighting everybody all at once, which stands to reason, right? Like, it just makes sense. It goes for any boat. But, uh, yeah, you have enough concealment to get you into trouble, is what I'm saying. So be careful. But uh, overall, 77,000 damage, not a huge game, but 20, almost 2,400 base XP. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.